Hello Techno Synth and Groovebox lovers. In this video I'll show you how to make a proper peak time techno track with a dark flavor on the Akai Force and I will show you all the important elements that you need to know. Before we get started, let's listen to the end result first.
Let's have a look at the foundation of my track and probably of every techno track. It's the kick drum. I've sampled it from the Syntact. It also says Syntact kick here. Let's have a look at the waveform together. Here you can see that I've shortened the waveform because the original kick sounds like this. And I don't want to have this ringing out sound and this long tail of the kick. This is why I reduce the sample. And I also use an envelope to reduce the sample. And this allows me to have more space in between the kick for the techno rumble that you will hear next. Before we go to the techno rumble, let's quickly go to the mixer page and have a look, look at the effects. So of course I have some of the instruments and some of the sounds here let me quickly turn that off. Um, some of them ducked by the mother ducker. And then I've got a maximizer and I've always got a para EQ at the end of every effects chain just to filter out some unwanted frequencies. So let me play the raw kick to you without any effects. It sounds like that. Now with the effects. subtle but I hope you can hear it and basically notice that it's a little more punchy than it was before. Sounds fuller and a little punchier. So while I've sampled the kick to a drum rack in the first track I've just recorded a loop in the second track, which is just an audio track and no drum rack. So let's have a quick look at it. As you can see, the ducking here takes place in the syntax already. It also has a ducking function, something like a sidechain compression. And let's listen 
just to the original sound of the syntax. Okay, that's not really the original sound because I've already applied some effects. Without the effects, that's what came out of the syntax. And I've applied additional sidechain and additional compression to make it sound louder and boomier. In combination with the kick, it sounds like this. At this point, it sounds as if the rumble is a little bit too loud, but when all the other elements come in, um, the loud rumble is pushed into the background a little bit. So it's okay like that. Part three of my track foundation is the child techno vocal. Um, I've just searched for a random free AI app that converts text into speech. And I can just show you some of the things that I typed in and that this um, text to speech converter came up with. So it sounded like that. Open your mind for another level of consciousness. Or like that. Let techno take control of your mind, body and soul. These sounded a bit too cheesy, so I tried out some other phrases. You can't escape the darkness. Open your mind to a new level of consciousness. Get lost in the darkness. <laughs> okay, so I ended up with these three. You can't escape the darkness. Get lost in the darkness. <laughs> so far, you hear directly what came out of the IA app. Um, I just sampled it into... <clears throat> into the Akai Force and let us listen to what kind of effects I applied and how they change the sound character. You can't escape the darkness. The air ensemble. You can't escape the darkness. It sounds more metallic, more robot-like, so more techno-ish. Then I've also included a pitch shifter without. You can't escape the darkness. With. You, you can't, can't escape, escape the, the darkness. darkness. So the voice sounds a little fuller and not that thin and high. Next one, air reverb. You can't escape the darkness. Then finally, the para EQ to filter out some unwanted frequencies. You can't escape the darkness. I've cut some of the low frequencies so that they don't interfere with my bass and my synth lines. Um, but this is not all when it comes to effects. If we go to input outputs, you can see that I've routed it to sub 3. So let's have a look at that channel. Submix 3. Effects, they are deactivated right now. So let's activate them. And here you can see an additional flanger, an additional delay and an additional pitch, sh pitch shifter is also applied here. Um, some of them have a mix ratio of zero, which means they are just effects that I turn in in the course or that I apply in the course of the track. Let me see. The delay is applied constantly, just with 9%. And the pitch shifter will also just be applied later on in the course of the track. So if we go back to the vocal, it sounds like this. You can't escape the darkness. Get lost in the darkness. Let's have a listen what we have so far.
Now that we've covered the basis of the track, let's have a listen to the second row. As you can see, we've got four new elements. Let's start with the first one and let's isolate those elements. So this is question and this is the answer. And I've recorded this with the mini D plugin. I've used the preset FAT5 and just changed a few parameters there. Then next we've got the bouncy bass. I've recorded the bouncy bass from the Syntag 2. We also have uh, the Mother Ducker applied here. Mother Ducker, Maximizer, and Para EQ without. The Mini D doesn't have any effects, just the Para EQ to filter some unwanted frequencies. Let's listen to the Voice FX. Last part are the heads. Let's have a look at the effects here reverb, mother ducker, and para EQ. And now everything together. With these elements, you already get a decent techno groove going. In the third row, we try to give a little more texture to the background, and therefore I use this pad here. Let me just isolate this clip. We are in the mode of C Phrygian and you can see that this is our root note here and then I've just applied the fifth, two, three, four, five and the sixth later on and this repeats throughout the track all the time so nothing special here. Then if we have a look at the hats In track two or in row two, we just have these two hats playing offbeat, and in row three, to give it a little more energy, we've also got sixteenth playing here, and also, as you can see, I've applied some swing. track has already more energy and sounds fuller. The next element of my techno track are the percussions. Let's listen to them only. Yeah, as you can hear there are some effects on them. Delay, reverb and para EQ of course. 
let's listen to the complete row. Let's take a closer look at the new elements coming in in the next row. So the first really big difference is the plucky ARP. It sounds like this. And for that one, I've used the OPX, used the organic marimba preset and changed it a little bit. And also the child techno sample, which came only at the end of every bar here, has also changed. You can't escape the darkness. 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 And the third and the last new element darkness. is darkness. the background noise. Darkness. Here. You can't escape the darkness. Darkness. Let me just show you the background vocal or the background sound on its own. It's just some ambience noise and I've also applied reverb and the reverb especially before the mother ducker so that the reverb is also ducked according to the beat and then everything together sounds like this We are now shortly before the break and there we increase the energy a little more from So basically all that is happening is that we had this hi-hat pattern before and now we've got additionally A10 playing and this adds more energy. And what's also important to prepare the break is the noise here. Therefore I've picked the Fabric Synth Haunted House which sounds like this. And I've just played a sustained note. But what's important is that this row, you can set this here, exclude from row launch. That means if I launch that complete row, the sweep is not triggered here and now I can decide for myself when I want to play that. Okay, so I for myself can decide when I'm going to apply this noise. It's not some pre-recorded audio file, it's really created by a synth um, to make it sound more authentic.
Let's have a look at the break. It's line seven. Of course, we have excluded the syntax kick, the rumble, the bouncy bass, and the percussions. The plucky arp is also excluded. And additionally to pad one, we've got pad two. Let's have a listen to that one exclusively. Here you can also see the notes. Let's have a look at the clip. So just two simple notes, nothing fancy. In combination with pad one, it sounds like that. So definitely a cool background for the break. Then to introduce the break, we have this awesome sounding sound effects. Really scary. As you can see, there are basically three different sounds. This one. A7 and A13. And they all together sound pretty impressive. And then we also have one Atmo FX. That's that one. And if we put this all together, the break sounds like this. Here we can see the snare roll. I've also excluded it from roll launch so that I have control over when I want to apply it. So let's apply the snare roll and the noise from the four together. So before the drop hits in row 9, I've got a special method. It's a delayed break and it only consists of two clips. This one here Get lost in the darkness. and the sound of X clap clip from before. And it's there to delay the drop. So you might call it not a coitus interruptus or a coitus interruptus, but a break interruptus to make the drop hit even harder. So usually after a break you would expect the climax of the track, but this is some kind of understatement drop in which I didn't I include the hats and cymbals so that the focus is on the heavy bass, um, the heavy kick and the heavy rumble. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the main climax that you were expecting after the delayed break basically comes in row 10. So let's listen to row 9 first and then to the climax of the track, which is row 10. Basically, we've got a delayed break and a delayed drop here to make the track a little bit more interesting and less predictable. And if we have a look at the child techno clip here, we can see the difference Darkness. from here. Darkness. Darkness. To Darkness. the climax. Here I've used darkness and I've just reversed the sample to make it sound more interesting and give it a strange and yeah, also gloomy touch. Then what's also new are additional 16th in the heads and symbol part and also the Atmo FX part is new. Let's go to the clip and listen to it. And this supports the heads and symbols. Now everything together. After the climax in row 10, the rest is only about reduction and we're slowly getting to the outro of the track, so nothing special here. Um, after the break, you don't have to use row 9, the understatement drop. You can also directly jump to row 10 and have a little variation here. But I think what's more interesting for you is how do I do transitions? That's what I asked quite often. And there are two different aspects to it. So the first one are the sound FX files here. So if I want to transition from one part to the other, um, for example, let's take this part where I reduce tracks. There I've got the noise uh, which is also excluded from the row, which I can trigger. And then at the end, there is another sound which introduces the next part where you obviously see some elements missing. Let me play that to you so that you can see what it sounds like. I'll hit the noise button straight away now. <laughs> So 
So this is only one part. Um, it sounds even better if you take out the kick and the rumble. As you can see, there is an A here, which means as soon as the crossfader is, these parts are also lit, as soon as the crossfader is to the left, um, the kick and the rumble is activated. And as soon as I move the crossfader over to B, it's as if you basically mute the two. And this is also nice to do in front of transitions. And then I've also got all the Q-Links button here. And that's basically, well, these are the main tools that I use to create transitions. So let's have a look at the main tools that I use for transitions. And these are the Q-Link buttons. First, for example, if I would start a break, then I would cut down um, all the high frequencies to yeah, inc let the energy increase throughout the break right before the drop. Um, I would also add some reverb. Let me quickly show you what this sounds like. So I think I've also triggered uh, the noise clip here. Didn't sound too bad. Um, anyways, you can see definitely what kind of effect the cutoff frequency and reverb has in the break. Then the snare roll, there we have just got a delay on the snare roll that I can increase. Um, and as you can see, I can't turn it higher than 50. That's always something I do. Therefore, hit edit and snare roll. And here you can see that the parameter range is only up to 50 because after 50%, the original signal gets, yeah, I don't know, um, definitely is not loud enough, gets reduced again. And this is why I basically limit the parameter range. Um, here I can jump to every of these different Q-links. Um, what's also is interesting is, maybe you didn't know that, you can just push delete and delete them. Or you could just hit copy and copy one Q-link to the next. Um, and this makes editing and working with Q-Links much easier if you use these in combination with the Q-Links. Okay, of course, that's not useful right now. So I will hit the undo button until everything is as it was the way before. Okay. So then what else do we have? We have this cutoff frequency. This one is just there to introduce certain elements. For example, the bouncy bass here. When I start row two, you can't hear the bouncy bass. And I can slowly bring it in. This is always good for transitions. So I use the cutoff frequency to introduce different new elements. And then you can see submix three, three times here. And um, therefore, let's just have a quick look at submix three. Effects, we've got the flanger effect here. I can control it also limited to 50%. Then next, the delay. 
and pitch shift. I think it's this one. Uh, okay, and I also can control the shift here. Let's see what kind of effect this has. Um, first of all, we should have a look at all the tracks that go through Submix 3. We've got the Mini D, the Vocal FX, the Child Voice, and the Plucky Arp, Pad 1 and Pad 2. Okay, let's pick a part where we have all of these elements. Let's increase the flanger effect. can hear um, this pitch shift effect especially if we focus on the voice so we can also increase tension here and prepare another transition. The delay effect is always good if you take out stuff because then you've got the old part ringing out and the transition from a part with with more elements to a part with less elements sounds smoother. And then I just like to fool around with some flanger effects or other effects to make the track more interesting. And yeah, these are the Q-Links button, so the main tools for my transitions. And of course there's one third element that I use for transitions quite often and that's the snapshot function. Um, you just have to hit edit and then launch. If you launch a row then you can take a snapshot and clear a snapshot and if you take a snapshot and you've got all these parts here turned to a different value, then these values are kept. And this helps you if you take a snapshot where, where all these knobs have the value of zero. This helps you, of course, to, if you mess around, to always go back. If you launch the same row, So you see as soon as I hit the row button again, the row launch button again, or the next scene, the values all go back to the snapshot that I saved. And this saves you a lot of trouble because you don't have to turn all the knobs back to their original state. If you like that track and you want to support me, you can listen to it on Apple Music or on Spotify. The link is in the description and please don't forget to leave a like for that video. Peace out.